Hey, good morning, LFA, and happy Easter. Come on, aren't you happy to be in the house of the Lord today? This is the day that it's all about as we celebrate our risen King. How many of you guys are ready to praise this morning? Amen. Let's worship the Lord together.
you're visiting this morning, I want to say thank you. Uh, there's a lot of great churches that are gathering today to celebrate Jesus. And if you're new, I want you to know what we are all about here at LFA. We thank God for these amazing facilities. We thank God for the lights. We thank God for the equipment. God has been gracious with all of these amazing volunteers, those who greet you at the doors and the valet parking. But when we get together, it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. So Father, I pray, Lord, that you are pleased with what you see and what you hear. Lord, today, God, we honor you. We magnify you. We glorify you. God, we remember what you did for us. That while we were dead in our sin, you sent Jesus to rescue us, to save us and redeem us. God, help us never to take that for granted. You have saved our lives. So God, today, I pray that as the message, your gospel is proclaimed. Lord, that it would change hearts, it would change minds, it would transform marriages, it would heal relationships. You do all things well. So have your way. And if you agree with that, would you shout amen? amen. Hey, can we do something? You know, I'm a big sports fan, and uh, of course, I can't really go to games anymore because I can't afford them. Um, but, but, and you've heard this before, when we get excited about our team, man, some of us turn into weirdos, right? We just, we don't care who's watching, we don't care who's listening, we just go all out. Can we take 10 seconds and do that for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords this morning? Hey, you've got some great people around you. Try to find somebody you don't know, tell them Happy Easter, and give them a hug before you're seated. If you love Jesus, shout amen. amen. If you're excited about today, shout amen. amen. Hey, today is Easter Sunday. Today, Christians all over the world are going to be getting together in homes, in cathedrals, in buildings, in churches to celebrate what we celebrate on Easter, which is the fact that Jesus is alive. If you remember, oh, we're going to get excited here in just a minute. And I need you to be with me, okay? Yeah. I may do a backflip off this stage. <laughs> Lord, help us. Um, if you remember last week, so Palm Sunday and we focused on the cross. And the chain of events for Holy Week or Passion Week, as some of you have heard it called, is Jesus is betrayed. He is arrested. He's tried. He's crucified, and then he goes to the grave, and what we're celebrating today, he is resurrected from that grave, from the dead. But if you remember last week, I said you can't get to the resurrection without getting to the cross first. And so last week, what we did was we focused on the cross, and we kind of talked about the why and the what. Why did Jesus have to go to a cross? Was that just some performance by God? And what does it mean for us today. And if you remember from last week, we looked to God's Word. That's our go-to, amen? 
We don't just trust what some pastor tells us or what the news tells us. We go to God's word, amen? So we went to God's word. And here's what the Bible says. The Bible says that when Jesus went to the cross, he became sin. He didn't sin. He became sin. In other words, when Jesus goes to that cross, he's taking all of the sin, past, present, and future, all of the sins that humanity had ever or would ever commit, and he takes it upon himself. Now, here's why that's important for us. Number one, when Jesus goes to the cross, it means sin is defeated. Doesn't mean sin is gone, right? Just step out those doors and look at the world around us. But what it means when Jesus goes to the cross is now, for those who put their faith in Jesus, we have a way to be forgiven. Now here's why that's a big deal. Here's why we should wake up and pay attention to that. Because the Bible also tells us there's a cost to sin. There's a price that has to be paid for sin. And the price is death. Because God can have nothing to do with sin. And what creation had been doing to the Creator is separating ourselves from Him because of sin. So when Jesus become sin and goes to the cross it not only means that we now have a way to be forgiven it means that he paid the penalty of sin so that we don't have to are you thankful for that so that anybody who puts their faith in him he paid the penalty for you this morning is Easter Sunday and today we celebrate and remember the resurrection of Jesus. Jesus is crucified. He dies on the cross. They take his body down and they put him in a tomb. Think of a hole in the face or the side of a mountain. If you've ever been to Jerusalem, you can see exactly what that tomb might have looked like. And they put his lifeless body in a tomb and they seal it with this massive boulder. And many of us, most of us know the story, but what we celebrate and remember today is what happened on that third day on that third day Jesus is raised out of that tomb and what we remember and celebrate today is the fact that our Savior has risen from the dead he is alive the enemy tried to keep him down the enemy couldn't touch him it also reminds us there's nothing too difficult for our God there's nothing impossible for our God People tried to catch Jesus in sin. They couldn't do it. Even today, people try to disprove and discredit his life and his teachings. They can't do it. The devil tried to wipe him out, and he couldn't do it. Our king is alive. Somebody make some noise. So last week, we looked at the cross. Why did Jesus have to die on a cross? What does it mean for us in 2024 and this morning with the time that we have I want to look at the resurrection and I want to talk about what does that mean for us when Jesus goes to the cross sin is defeated when Jesus comes out of that tomb death is defeated death is horrible death oftentimes is tragic When somebody that we care about, somebody that we love, dies, how many of you know a little bit of hope dies with that person? Some of our dreams die with that person. Some of the plans that we had die with that person that we care about or that person that we love. And when they pass on, there's this void that on this side of heaven is never going to be filled. There's a space. It's like a hole in our life or our heart It's a loss that can never be fully restored. But as followers of Jesus and what we remember today on Easter Sunday, we're reminded there's more to this world that we live in. There's so much more than just this world that we live in. This world that we live in is temporary. The Bible says it's passing away. But there's also this spiritual world that is eternal. And I want to just quickly break down 
Why do we need to know this? And I also want to talk about it's not just enough to know it. We need to have confidence in what Jesus has done for us. How many of you know, especially the world that we are living in, we need to know unwavering. We need to know with confidence that Jesus died on a cross and Jesus rose from the dead. I want you to listen to the words of Jesus. He makes this very bold claim and he touches on this spirit world and this earthly world. He, he very quickly, very quickly breaks down the difference between physical life and death and spiritual life and death. It's found in John chapter 11 and I want to read verses 25 and 26. Listen to what Jesus says. I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even if they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. And then he, he asks this question to the people that are gathered there. He says, do you really believe this? And I want to ask you this morning. Do you really believe this? Do you believe it because it's in the Bible and you know the Bible's a good book so you should believe it? Do you believe it because mom and dad believe it and they're good people so I might as well believe it too? Or do you have unwavering confidence that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he was sent to die for our sins, and that he defeated and conquered death? And I want to talk about why this is important to know with confidence. If you're here this morning or you're watching online, maybe you're not sure exactly how much you believe that. I know the story. I don't know. I heard my professor talk or I heard, you know, on, on television. And they broke it down that Jesus wasn't really the Son of God and that the resurrection is a hoax. There's a lot of people that believe that. And if that's you... I want to break down very quickly in just a few words what the resurrection means for you and for me. It means, according to Jesus, we don't die. Our physical bodies do. That's going to happen to all of us. We can't outrun death. Um, no matter how much plastic surgery I get, I can't outrun death. Right? All of us are going to physically die. But what Jesus is saying and what we read about again in 2 Corinthians 5.8 is for those who are in Christ, the moment we draw our last breath, we are immediately in the presence of God. So when Jesus comes out of that tomb, he does it so that you and I could live forever. I want to give you just a couple of things. Why having confidence in all that took place on Good Friday and Easter Sunday, why is that so important for the believer today? When you have that confidence in all that Christ has done for you, number one, you don't have to fear sin. You don't have to fear sin. Now there's kind of two parts to this. Let me give you both quickly. Number one, we all sin, right? Bible says we all fall short of the glory of God. But when I have this understanding and this confidence in all that Jesus has done for, for me, when I do sin, I don't dwell on it. When I do mess up, because I'm going to mess up, I don't let the enemy throw my past in my face or try to rub my mistakes or my failures in my face. I continue to press on. Why? Because I'm confident. I have this confidence that there's nothing I can do that will ever stop God from loving me. I have this confidence that there's nothing I could do to earn my salvation. There's nothing I can do to earn my way into heaven. Why? Because it has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with Jesus. So when we have this confidence, it can be life changing because you're going to make mistakes. I'm going to make mistakes. And the moment that we do, there is our enemy trying to rub it in our face. 
But if I have this confidence, I shake it off and continue on to the next thing that God has planned for my life. I don't have to fear sin also means that I don't have to fear this sin-filled world that we live in. How many of you know our world is evil? You look at what's come out in the last 24 to 48 hours, there is no question evil is on the rise in our nation and in our world. They're trying to take Jesus out of Christmas. It's about Santa Claus, not about Jesus. They're trying to take Jesus out of Easter. They don't want us celebrating and remembering and having this confidence of all that Jesus has done for us. They want us to have a nice meal and celebrate the Easter Bunny. There's no question there is an agenda, and the battle's not against flesh and blood. I got two amens there. Let's try it again. The battle is not against flesh and blood. Our fight is not against people who don't think like us or believe like we do. Our fight is against the enemy. And there's no question that the enemy's at work. He's moving. Evil is on the rise. And what a lot of Christians are doing is they're separating themselves from sinners. The world's getting so dark, pastor. It's getting so evil. I just, me and my family are going to lock ourselves in our house. We're just going to go to church, go to job, and then go back to church, and that's going to be our life. A lot of Christians are hiding out from the evil and from the sin in the world. And I want to remind you, because of what Jesus did, because he defeated death, you and I don't have to fear anyone or anything. Because no matter how evil the world gets... He is with us. So church, listen to me. When we have this, when it's more than just a story, when it's more than just religion, but it becomes real in our lives, we no longer run from darkness. We run towards darkness because we have the light. We have the peace. We have the hope. We have the answers that the world needs. His name is Jesus. We don't have to fear sin. We don't have to fear evil. But the other thing it means, the resurrection of Jesus and all that took place, is that we don't have to fear death. I want you to listen to the words of the Apostle Paul. Philippians chapter 1, and I want you to tell me, does this sound like somebody who's worried about dying? Does this sound like somebody who's afraid of death? Philippians chapter 1, beginning... In verse 21, to live is Christ, to die is gain. If I am to go on living in this body, I know that it's going to mean fruitful labor. I know that I'm going to keep preaching the gospel. I'm going to keep running towards evil. I'm going to tell everybody about Jesus whether they want to hear it or whether they don't. I know it will mean fruitful labor for me, yet... What shall I choose? I don't know. He's talking about life and death. He says, I'm torn between the two because I desire to depart this body and be with Christ. That's better by far. Yet it's better for you, he's speaking to the church. It's more necessary for you that I remain in my earthly vessel, my earthly body. It's clear Paul has no fear of death. He actually says he wants to die. He wants to leave his body and leave this earth so that he can be present with the Lord, which he says is better by far. And for those of us who have this confidence in what Jesus Christ has done for us, we don't have to fear death. How many of you know a lot of people fear death? A lot of Christians fear death. And I have stood in hospital rooms of people who were clinging to life, the doctors had already given up hope. Uh, maybe it was age or maybe it was something else. I've stood in hospital rooms of people who served God with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength and people who didn't believe in God. I've done funerals for people who want you to preach a salvation message. Their dying wish is whoever's doing my funeral, just make sure they give an altar call. And I've done and been at funerals of people who didn't want you to mention the name of Jesus. 
And can I tell you, when you walk into that hospital room, there's a difference. There's a difference between those who have this confidence and those that don't. When you, ha when you attend a funeral of somebody that you know served Jesus, followed Jesus with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength, when you walk into that room, do you see sorrow? Yes. Do you see grief? Absolutely. But you can almost feel the hope and the peace and the strength and the reassurance. You go to a funeral of somebody that doesn't have this confidence and you feel the exact opposite. You feel despair. You feel heaviness. You feel a hopelessness. You feel fear. And what Easter reminds us of is that Jesus defeated death. And when he did that, it means that Jesus conquered death so you could live forever. He defeated death. He died so that you don't have to. He conquered death so that all those who put their faith in him could live forever. But can I challenge you, church? Is that okay? It's not enough to just know the story. It's not enough to just know the events and know the Bible stories and know what happened. It's not enough to just know that we have eternal life. You know what else Easter Sunday means? It means that we should be motivated to make the most of the time that we have. You know, I remind, reminded some of our worship team for those of us who are in Christ, Easter's not for us. For those of us who are in Christ, today and all week long is just a day that we reflect, we remember, we honor, and we celebrate. But the message of Easter is for those who are lost. The message of Easter is for those who have separated themselves from God. But as we remember all that took place and how Jesus walked out of that tomb, church, it should motivate us to make the most of the time that we have. I said last week that the devil knows that for those who are in Christ, he can't touch your eternity. He knows that. The devil's brilliant. He's not dumb. He knows that if you are in Christ, you are a new creation. You are saved by faith through grace. He knows that he can't touch your eternal destination, so here's what he does. He doesn't leave us alone. He does everything he can to keep you quiet. He does everything he can to get you and me to just coast through life. They're sinners. You don't want to be around sinners. You need to stay over here and separate yourself because they're bad people. You know one of the most effective ways that the enemy gets us to be ineffective in this life is to get us busy. To keep us so busy with just living life. Till we get to the point where we actually become so focused on just making it through this life that we forget about eternity. I read a study recently and it listed the top 10 fears that Americans have. So this is not the world, this is just Americans. Top 10 fears, I wanna give you the first four. These are in order, one, two, three, four. The number one fear, according to this study by Chapman University, that Americans have is they fear corrupt government officials. They fear an economic or financial collapse. They fear Russia using nuclear weapons. And the number four fear, according to this study that Americans have, is the U.S. becoming involved in another world war. Now, these things matter. We should be paying attention to current events and things that are happening in, my, in our world. But the reason I share that is because we can become so consumed with this world that we actually only live for this world. 
So when we remember Easter and all that Jesus did, we're reminded that we have eternal life. We're reminded this world is not our home. The 50 or 70 or 90 years that we get here is the blink of an eye compared to eternity. And so as we remember Easter, we're supposed to be motivated that I'm going to make the most of the time I have. Not accumulating wealth, not trying to find the perfect career, not living my life to try to give my kids everything they want to make them happy. We should be looking to accomplish things that have an impact for eternity. I'm talking to the church this morning, followers of Jesus. We should make the most of the time that we have by looking for opportunities to shine and share Jesus everywhere that we go. Because we know if you die without Christ, you are separated for eternity from him. We have the answer. The sports, the fun things absolutely matter. All three of our kids, two of them are in service. Thank God the youngest one's not. He might have ended up on the stage this morning. All three of our kids are in sports. We love, we're a sports family. But moms and dads, can I speak to you for just a quick second? As I was preparing this message, this hit home. We've got to start raising our kids to understand that their relationship with Jesus is the number one thing in their life. Because when they go to junior high, when they go to high school, when they go off to college or enter the workforce, there's an entire world that's trying to convince them of something else. So when we think about Easter, we celebrate the fact that our king is alive, he defeated death, he is risen from the grave. We should celebrate all that Jesus has done, that we have forgiveness from sin, that he paid the price so we don't have to, that he conquered death so that we can live forever, but it should also motivate us. It should, it should motivate us to change the way that we live, to change the way that we entertain, to change the way that we prioritize, because we understand this world is not our home. This world is temporary. I'm going to start making decisions based on eternity. I'm going to start investing in people and relationships with eternity in mind. I'm going to start parenting, understanding that my kids need to know they need to have this confidence in all that Christ has done for them so that no matter how much evil surrounds them, nobody's able to sway them. Their confidence is in Jesus. I want to ask you to stand. And we're going to close this morning, but if you're here or you're watching and you've never given your life to Jesus, today can be the day. I don't know your story. I don't know all that you've gone through. I don't know what life you have experienced. But here's what I do know. Jesus died because he loves you. God loves you so much. You are valuable. You are precious. You are loved by God. And today can be the day if you give your life to Jesus... Your past, your present, your future sins are forgiven. If today you'll give your life to Jesus, you don't have to fear this world. You don't have to fear sin. You don't even have to fear death. Because for us who are in Christ, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And today can be the day where you walk out of here with that confidence in all that Jesus has done for you. I want to ask you if you would bow your heads. And if you're here this morning and you know that you need to get right with the Lord, you know that you have never given your life to Jesus, I'm going to ask you to do something with every head bowed. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand right now wherever you're at. Don't second guess yourself. Don't doubt yourself. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
And if that's you or if you're watching, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. In fact, can we all do it? Can we all pray this prayer together? God, I need to be forgiven. And I receive and accept Jesus because I believe he died so that I can be forgiven. So today, I give you my life. Today, I receive your forgiveness. And today I acknowledge that Jesus conquered death and because I now belong to you, I have hope of eternal life. My life is not my own because today I give it to you. Amen. Amen. We're going to take communion. Now, if you just prayed that prayer, guess what? You're part of the family, which means you get to join us this morning. But maybe you came in and you, you passed the people passing these out. If you don't have one, would you just raise your hand? We want to make sure that every person has one because we're going to take communion. Luke chapter 22 reminds us that when we do this, there's a reason behind it. Jesus said that we're supposed to do this to remember him. What are we remembering? We're remembering his life. The model that he left for us. If you ever want to know how to act, respond, decide, look at the life of Jesus. He's our model. This also reminds us of his death. That he was crucified and beaten for you and for me. But 1 Corinthians 11 says... That when we do this, we are proclaiming the Lord's death. We're remembering and honoring and revering what Jesus Christ has done. But we are doing it until he comes back again. Jesus is coming back one day. <coughs> and when he comes back, he's not coming back as a government politician. He's not coming back. As somebody who will go to West Point and be an amazing general and lead armies. When he returns, he's returning as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. To wipe out sin and death once and for all. Amen. I want you to take that wafer, if you would. Open that before you open the juice. Or you'll be in for a surprise. Would you... Would you pray with me? Lord, we thank you. God, today is all about you. So, Lord, I pray that you are pleased with what's taken place here today. Lord, I thank you for those who have given their life to you. Lord, that's why we do what we do. Praise you, God, for those who were lost are now found. God, I thank you for Jesus, your son, that you loved us enough that you made a way for us to be forgiven. Lord, I thank you for the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. So Lord, what we're doing today, we do in obedience to what you've told us to do. We're remembering the price that was paid so that we could be forgiven. Today, Easter Sunday, we remembered that Jesus defeated death and it's a reminder that we have eternal life in you. We thank you. And the church said, amen. Let's take the wafer together. And now let's take the juice. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Church, before we leave and have our festivities, our Easter egg hunts, and if you're like us, we're getting together with friends and family for a, a, an eating competition. But before we do that, before we leave, can we just give God some more praise and worship with everything that we have?
give God some praise this morning if you're thankful for him. He is risen. He is risen. Hey, listen, what a great morning that we've had to celebrate the resurrection of our Savior, the hope that it gives us, the eternal life that we have, and the privilege that you and I have to share the gospel. Hey, if you gave your heart to the Lord today, we want to know about it. We want to help connect you and kind of guide you in your next steps. If you're watching online, you can just text the word decision to the number that's on the screen and uh, we'll connect you there. If you're here in person, what we'd love for you to do, grab a connection card. Please fill that out. Take it to Guest Central in the atrium. We'd love to celebrate that decision with you. And you've done it in an amazing time because next Sunday we've got baptisms right here on Sunday morning. Come on, church family. you got to be excited about that. <laughs> Baptism is you get to make a public confession of your faith. So on the back of our notes here this morning, there's a QR code. You can scan that to sign up. Or if you're watching online, you can find that on our website. Last but not least, we know there are many of you that are visiting here for the first time. We're so thankful that you came. Would you fill out a connection card? Take that to Guest Central in the atrium. We have a gift for you and we'd love to shake your hand. Hey, listen, God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your day and we'll see you next week.